We're going to be covering the various ways that you can update the fonts. So that includes updating the capitalizing using the transform, updating the decoration, so underlining and removing the underline, adding a shadow, indenting, line spacing, line height, updating the font size using the shorthand method for the font size and the font family. Also how you can select from Google fonts and bring those fonts families into your web page using the line height to center the content vertically as well as using the text align and aligning it either to the left, right, or center. And all of the commonly used font properties that you would encounter with CSS are coming up in this lesson. Let's go into our HTML. We're gonna select the element with an ID of two, and then we're gonna add a border around it and apply some updates to the properties and the styling of that. So set the border, and I'm gonna set a picks, one pick border and make a red border around it so that we can see the page, the content on the page zoom in so it's slightly larger. And now let's make some updates to the text. So we know with the text, we can set a color. So the color is set using the color value and that can update the text color. There's also other properties for text. So such as the text align, and that allows us to either to center, to justify it left, right. So there's a number of different options. So if we set it to right, what happens to the text is that it aligns to the right. And by default, it's aligning to the left. You can also center align the text and that will center align that text content within there. I'm also gonna be adding in some margins so it's not exactly directly right on the border and I'll make it slightly larger. So do a padding of the page element and we can also add in some margins if needed. So that can highlight it a little bit better where we're seeing where it's aligning. And notice that the alignment is taking place to the end of where the padding is. So if we were to set it up as left, we still have the padding on the left-hand side. I'm gonna bring it back to center and save that. There's also a justify. And what the justify will do is it's gonna spread that out more equally. So it'll look like the text content is spread equally from the left to the right. And in this case, because the second part of the sentence ends, it's not able to adjust text for the equal width for the left and the right margins. But if we were to add in additional text into it, so I'll just duplicate the text content, that justify now is trying to equally spread out the content between the left and the right side. Text, decoration, and there's a number of options for this. So there's an underline, there's an overline, a solid none is the default, so there's no decoration on the text. Although if you are using an anchor tag, by default that there are decorations on those. So let's do the underline for the text content. And then we'll select the anchor text and do the text decoration. If you wanna remove out the default text decoration of the anchor, then you could set those to none and that's gonna remove out those default text decorations. A uh, line through that you can do, and this will do the line through the selected text. There's an overline option, so that will place the, instead of the underline, it'll overline it, so place the line over top of the text. Can transform the text, so using the text transform option, so if you want to capitalize the text, which it probably already is capitalized, you can convert it all to lowercase, and you can also convert it all to uppercase. So select the anchor tags, and update these all to be uppercase text. So that will uppercase everything. I'm gonna select the header content, and we'll capitalize the header element. So selecting the text transform, and then capitalize and update that to be lowercase. And then the display is gonna be showing it as capitalized text, such as you can do a text shadow, and that provides a shadow effect. So you need to specify where you're positioning the shadow. So setting it up as four picks, four picks over, and then four picks down. So that gives us the shadow effect, and then the green is the shadow color, and the text indent, and then specifying how much you wanna indent the text, which will indent the text starting at what the first char character is within the selection. 
Letter spacing can be used to identify the space between the letters. So that's the letter spacing property, and this is expecting a unit value. So setting up the letter spacing of 10 picks will space out the letters using the values there for the 10 picks between the letters. You can also select the line height, and the line height sets the height of that particular line of content. So B dot by default, it is set to whatever the font size is. So you can set it to a different line height, and that will space out the spacing even more. You can set a font size, and the font size can be either an increment, or it can be set as a value, either the picks, points, EMs, so any one of the units that you can use. So I'm gonna just use the picks and set this to be 20 picks, which will make the font size larger, and if you don't have the line height, the default line height will be set to the 20 picks. Also use the line height to vertically center. So if you just have the one sentence, so within the wrapper, we've got the header, the div. So let's make a selection of that element. So header div, set up a height for this element. That's gonna be set to 100 picks. Horizontally center the text. I'll add in a border. And if we set the line height to 100 picks, now that will now vertically center the text within the element. You can also set the font to use. So that can be set using the font family and that will update the font. These are the default fonts that are showing up within the editor. So you can select from those and those are default fonts. You can also get fonts from external sources. I typically will use Google fonts in order to select a font. And this is a website that you can go to, select fonts and bring them into your project so going down and there's over 1400 fonts right now at the moment that you can select from. So you'd go through here and select the font that you want to use. And I'll select this one, make a selection of the font. It's gonna give you an example of the way it's gonna look. Select the view selected fonts. And now you can get the code to bring it into the font. So there's the CSS for the font. We can go and apply that to our web content, setting the font family. We also need to bring the font in and it shows you how you can do that where you can link to the style sheet. And the best way to do it, if you wanna do it directly within your CSS file, is you can do the import. And the import will allow you to bring it in to your CSS file. So any of your HTML that's linking to the CSS file will then have access in order to use that font. So now when we look at the company name, it's set within this font that we've selected from the Google fonts. Let's update the font size. I'll make it really big to 3EM. You also have an option to set the different styles, so it's different font styles. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the font styles within the anchor text. And there's options by default, you're gonna be using the normal. You can set it to italic, which is gonna angle it slightly over to the right-hand side. You can also set a font weight, and there's number of increments there. You can set it to bold, bold er, and that will just bold the font content that's been selected. You can also do this as a font shorthand. So I'm gonna go ahead and select another page element where we've got the ID of one. So select that page element, and then we'll apply some different font properties to those. So set that up, and I'll add in a border so that we can see where the location of this page element is. So that's the one that we've selected down there. Let's add some padding to it. Also update the font size. It's a really big font there the font shorthand, we can apply some different sizing properties to it. So instead of using the font size, you can bring that into just under the font because you do need to have two properties, which is the font size and the font family. So if we want to update this and include the font family that we brought in from Google, we could do it within this type of format. And now that's gonna be applied and we've done it within a shorthand format. So you do need to have the size and also the font family, and you can add in additional ones such as the italic. So that will italicize the font, and that just provides a simpler way that you can write out that font content. So these are some of the commonly used font properties within styling. So go ahead and try it out, make some selection of the page elements, and apply the various styling properties to the elements. And you could be ready to move on to the next lesson.